you were like really pretty nice to the not that I expected you to be mean, but like, like to the producers and stuff in the book. I, I kind was, of was hoping for I like was still some... under con I was still under contract when I wrote it. <laughs> I but, knew it. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm not gonna ever sit here and completely bash them. Um, my frustrations come in with the fact that if I realize like this is a entertainment business and it's a business and you don't take things personally but I'm still going to maintain a professional relationship with you. I just asked for that in return. Um, I think when the line started getting crossed and I got told to be a good little boy and keep my mouth shut, like that's when I was like, you don't get to say that. And like, you don't get to still act like you have this control and this power over me. Yes, I have a contract with you. Yes, I have an NDA. Yes, I'm going to abide by that. But please don't demean me. Please don't threaten me. Um, please don't make these statements saying you made me when this is America and you're only as good as your last job. And if that's was the bachelor for me, that was the bachelor for me. And I felt like I did a good enough job to keep moving forward. So like that, that's where my frustration came in with the franchise. Um, I'll never bite the hand that feeds me. I appreciate them. I'm thankful for them, but that's my little rant. I, I mean, that's good because, and I also think you say in it that when you found out that, you know, they, your, the, one of the producers called Cassie's dad to come out and kind of, you felt like, oh, this is pushing yeah. us to break up. Like they want us to break up. I think it's so nice that you revealed that because as people in the industry, we understand that that's how the show works, but some people don't. Some people don't understand how the kind of ins and outs work. Yeah. I, and I think that was important too, for me to really share with people is like, I, one of my goals of the show is to break the fourth wall. And I don't think production really liked that I was on board with that, but nobody wants to feel tricked nowadays. And I, and I think that was my growing frustration as I was, you know, watching or not really watching, but hearing about Peter's season um, and seeing the, the recaps on Twitter and they wouldn't let me write about it. They wouldn't let me talk about his season because I knew I'd keep it too real. Um, they knew yeah. that I knew too much of what was going on. I mean, Victoria doesn't show up with Chase Rice singing as her ex <laughs> on accident. Um, the whole Victoria situation, I feel bad for that poor lady and I feel frustrated for Peter just because there was so much confusion going on and I feel like that's the producer's job is to sort of help guide the lead, guide the person. I felt like they hung him out to dry in so many different ways and set him up for failure. So that mm -hmm. that's more so where my frustration was with them. I remember when we were, I was at an event for TCAs a couple years ago, right before The Bachelor was announced and you were wearing this jacket with the heart with the heart patch on your sleeve and yeah. i was like he is he is going for this bachelor and like he as he should be because you were i mean in my opinion was the like top runner but it was so funny to me because so many other ones are like oh if it happens it happens and it was like no you want this to happen you want to find love and you clearly believe that the show works so yeah yeah so i mean yeah i, I feel like i saw the positivity that can come from it and i I ended up, look, I mean, I look back now and it's like, I'm happily in love with a relationship that I cherish um, and I got from the franchise and from the show. So I can't thank them enough. And I mean, it's, here's my whole thing. I realized this and after time of reflection, it's an entertainment business and it's an entertainment business, but it's blended with your personal life. So it's a little tricky, but who can fault me for, you know, moving on and taking the next gig or the next offer that I had in that world. I mean, I think people don't want, I think there's so many people right now that are just, that hide the fact that this is TV and it's entertainment. I got paid to be The Bachelor. I hopefully did a good job with it, but that doesn't take a, that doesn't take away from the fact that my relationship is very real and I right. love Cass and I got that from the show too. So it's mm -hmm. like a, it's a fine balance, you know? Um, the one other question I had about filming the show, and I don't know if you can tell me this, but do producers get to pick who gets the one-on-ones? Because you kept being like, I want to, I was hoping to see this person, but I saw this person. Like, did you have any say? Um, no, I didn't really have a lot. Um, <laughs> I thought the lead would get to be like, I want to see these people. Like, I had, I had, I had a, I had a choice of like, I had a choice and like options. I don't know if I would ever say I fully had control because I, you don't ever really fully have control. Being like, mm, it would be nice to have this person, but here's here's what I will combat that with: is at times that's okay because keep in mind these producers know these girls way better than you do, and they know when the timing will be right. Like if I had a one-on-one -on -one with Cassie week one, 
she might not have been able to open up as much as she did with me in Thailand or felt comfortable saying what she said off mic um, in Thailand that sort of did it for me, that turned me on when she said that, you know, like that, that, like that might've never happened and I might not have fallen in love. So I have to trust these producers. And I say that in there too, um, or I said it on my social media when I said that the other day, I was like, it's a give and take. You have to trust them, but then also you have to sort of be wary of what's, what's going on. I think I it's interesting that you had said that that moment was like very and a very important moment for you because you brought up that quote multiple times in the book yeah. too. So it seems like yep. that really is like a turning point for you guys and your relationship. It was, and it allowed me to sort of think, how do I not know by now? Am I supposed to know by now? Like, but I not only that, but I apply that to every aspect in everything in my life. Like, how do I know I'm straight? How do I know that I want to be a football player? How do I know that I'm you know, I need to be this masculine or how do I know like this and this and it really allowed me to like really figure out what's going on with myself. And I think it's a great question that everybody should sort of ask themselves is how do I not know by now? And it's okay not to know by now. It's not, it's okay not to have everything figured out. I would hope if I was on the show that I would be a girl who was like badass enough to be like, yeah, like what the hell dude? Like, you know, yeah, <laughs> I know. Let me know. Like, you, know, you can't say it on the show. Like we're in the ocean, like give me a wink or like let me know if I should just be like, <laughs> planning my next move. It was so nice that like uh, I said, like that was a turn on when she said that I was like, nice. We have somebody that's not like all, another rebel with like, like me. I was like, I, I consider myself a little rebellious. So like when she did that, I was like, oh, here we go. Game on. I kind of feel like you've set the stage for future Bachelor and Bachelorettes because after you, it was like, you know, Becca was a badass obviously, but then like after yours, it was like Hannah B did, you know, broke all the rules too and Peter tried to unfortunately still right now yeah <laughs> seriously so Peter's i mean just going through his list <laughs> i'm like i'm like peter get inside you know what yeah seriously yeah. social distancing bro um but yeah i think that it, in a way you kind of have set the bar for a new kind of generation of bachelors being able to do kind of follow your heart more than in the past yeah and i think um or i think i i hope that it also allows you know the producers and everybody to see too that um, there is no formula, there is no right or wrong way. And I'm, I'm hoping with Claire, you don't have to manipulate and try to control a situation for a 38, um, year old that's uh, hopefully knows what she wants and what she's looking for. And, um, I think that going back, um, in her direction, as far as, and I'm, I'm not saying this, that she's old, but like, she's obviously casted a lot older than what I was when I was a bachelor at 26. Um, so I think that um, if there's a time to sort of get back to the basis of finding love instead of trying to get a dude laid or trying to have, you know, push whatever agenda they were trying to push with Hannah and Peter, um, I think that's important. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. And I hope they get to film it. I am a little worried, though, that these names are out there and they're probably all DMing each other, like, as we speak, but... <laughs> oh, really? I mean, all well, like, oh, I didn't know think all about the that. guys. I, so I bet I'm they're gonna recast. I bet they'll recast. It's yeah, too, it's too important for them. It's too important. Yeah, they'll recast some of them. So we'll see. Or what they might do is just be like, "Yo, you're not on," and then two weeks later, be like, or two weeks before the show, be like, "Actually, just kidding. You're on." So come on, <laughs> you know, they'll, I mean, I they'll do not... something to figure it out. Yeah, I hope they cast older guys. I'm looking for like 50s. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to see. Because she's 38, let's be honest. Like, you, yeah. I, that's not out of the realm. No, it's, I said, ooh, because I sort of like that. It's a good, it's uh, a... <laughs> so I want to see, like, Blake and, like, an older man in paradise fighting over the same girl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just... You know, it's so funny as my mind went to, like, I wonder what 50, 55, and 60-year-olds would sponsor on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that's world. where my mind went. I was a like, they can, get away, they can get away with a bunch of like Ben Gay and Icy Hot, like mm -hmm. they could get away with some different types of brands. I like it. 